Green, Esquire. Place, New Salem, Illinois. Date, well, today is election day in the year of our Lord, 1831. For over two score years has America been a republic where free men can come into town and have their votes recorded. But no clerk has been sent to us. It's not every man who can read and write. And it's beginning to look as if our schoolmaster, Mentor Graham, will have to surrender his vote and serve as clerk. Or perhaps James Rutledge, owner of our local tavern. The question of decision is left to me, leaving me in nothing less than a great state of indecision, when I suddenly spy the unlikeliest solution to a problem ever seen. Well now, young man, is this the town of New Salem? It is indeed. Then I have arrived. Um, you have friends here or, or uh, kinfolk? Or have you just come to seek employment? Oh, I have secured employment, sir. I have been hired by a man named Dennis Offutt to work as clerk in his general store. As a clerk, eh? Now, the same idea occurred to me, gentlemen. <clears throat> well, if you're a clerk, it must be that you can read and write. Well, I reckon I could make a few rabbit tracks. Oh, you can, huh? Well, let's see you make a few. He read, what's the funny, Squire? Listen to this. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln, his hand and pen. He will be good, but God knows when. <laughs> <laughs> well, Abraham Lincoln, we'd be honored to have you serve as our clerk if you'd so oblige. Oh, I'd be pleased to do it, sir. Good. Come right around here. Sit down here, and the town folk will tell you one by one which way they mean to vote. All right, here we go. William, you're the first. William Green. By the very first day he arrives in New Salem, Abe Lincoln serves his people. And when he takes up his duties in Offutt's store, some of us get an inkling as to the kind of man Abe's going to be, uh, the kind of man that grows on you. That comes to 76 cents, Mr. Murray. 76 cents, huh? Well, would you uh, mark it down in Mr. Offutt's book, please? Well, I... Murray, might be better seeing as how things are if I advanced you the 76 cents myself. Well, however you like, Abe. Thanks. Abe sure grows on you. What Bowling Green says is true. And that comes straight from me, Bill Green. And Squire Green is no kin of mine. You see, I'm Abe's friend. And so is Mentor Graham, our schoolmaster. Abe sure has a gift for making friends and a curiosity about things like I've never seen before. Mentor used to lend him books on all sorts of subjects. The store got to be more and more like a schoolroom, and I'd sit around nights just listening. <laughs> Maybe I'd learn something, too. And to do all other acts and things which independent states may have right to. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. You got it right. All 1,320 words right, just as they are in the book. Well, that's enough for tonight. Aren't you going home? Not just yet. I have to go over the accounts. Somewhere I'm six and a half cents off. Abe will stay here now until he finds that mistake. And then you know what? Bright and early the next morning, he'll walk three miles to return those few cents. How behave. Mrs. Hopkins, I owe you this. You owe me? Well, yesterday I overcharged you six and a half cents. Well, glory be. There ain't many young men around here as honest as you, Abe. And that's what the folks start calling him now. Honest Abe. I hear you got a new man here, Abe Lincoln. Now, figuring as how the Clary's Grove boys ought to give him a 
Fit an introduction to the community. Abe Lincoln? Boys and I have been wondering whether you was a fighting man. I wouldn't say that about myself at all now. <laughs> Boys think I'm pretty good. Armstrong's the name. Howdy, Mr. Armstrong. Hey, Good morning, Bill. Blackstone's Commentaries in the Laws of England. Well, that's a proper title, yes. My book. Why'd you want to read a book about an Englishman? Mr. Armstrong, I told you I wasn't a fighting man, but you provoked me into this, so I don't aim to disappoint you. Surprise me. Let's get back to the store, Bill. We have a full day's work ahead. That fight surprised a lot of others, too. Folks round about had come to think of Abe as kind of soft with all his time taken up with book learning and such. But now they came to see that Abe was a fighter when he had to be. Overnight, he got a name and a standing for himself, a thing that might have taken years otherwise. It was a good thing it happened when it did, because soon after, Mr. Offit skipped town to avoid his debts, leaving Abe and me to close up the store. Well, Abe, everything's straightened out here. I guess we're both out of work. I'm gonna try my hand at farming. I know you're doing the right thing. Vote for Abe Lincoln. Hmm. Sounds pretty good. Well, I reckon when a man loses his job, about the only thing left for him is to try politics. It's easy these days. All you have to do is announce yourself, then go around the country and see how many folks you can talk into voting for you. And if you win, pays pretty good. Dollar a day. Gentlemen and fellow citizens, I presume you all know who I am. I'm Abraham Lincoln. I have been solicited by many friends to become a candidate for the legislature. Well, my politics are short and sweet, like the old woman's dance. Uh, I'm in favor of a national bank. I'm in favor of the international improvement system and a high protective tariff. Well, these are my sentiments and political principles. If elected, I shall be thankful. If not, be all the same. And it was all the same, because Abe lost and went back to being out of work. And now I see a new side of Abe, 
a side I didn't know he had. With all his friends, he's a lonely man. Bowling Green did get Abe the job of postmaster. And... Any mail for me, Abe? Why, yes, Mrs. Thompson. Say, I hear your boy's getting to be the brightest youngster in the county. Oh, thank you kindly, Abe. Hello, Miss Thompson. Hello, Anne. My, you're looking mighty pretty these days. Is it because of what Mr. McNeil's been writing you? No, ma'am. I'm still waiting for the letter from him. He promised to write when he was ready for me to come east and join him. You're going to be married in New York? Not here? I don't know, Mrs. Thompson. It will be Mr. McNeil who makes the plans. Oh, I see. Well, good day. The letter didn't come today, Miss Ann. But like I promised before, the minute it does, I'll drop everything and bring it straight to you. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln. And wouldn't you know that Abe Lincoln, the unlikeliest man in these parts, has taken a shine to the prettiest girl in town, Ann Rutledge? Hello, Mr. Lincoln. Oh, I reckon this is a letter you've been waiting for, Miss Ann. Oh, thank you. I was wondering if you'd like to come in and wait. It, it would be that I'd like to write a reply and send it off by you. I'd be pleased to wait. It seems that I was mistaken. There'll be no reply. I'm mighty sorry. Don't be sorry. I guess it was my own fault. I, I guess I took too much for granted. I'm so ashamed. Let everyone know that I'm waiting for him. There'll be talk now. They'll all say I've been jilted. You don't have to let them talk, Miss Ann. They could think you jilted him. They'd never believe me. They might. If maybe you were to go places with somebody else. Places like the debating society and the song fests and the dancing parties. Well, you could go with another man. If it suits you, and I'd be honored. You could go with me. Oh, I know you speak well, Mr. Lincoln. I've heard you at the debating society. And while you may not be able to carry a tune, you certainly can sing louder than anyone else in New Salem. <laughs> <laughs> Abe, I've been asking myself, why don't you put yourself up for state legislature next election? Mr. Graham, that's mighty kind of you, but I bit once and I went down barking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but Abe, you didn't know many of the voters outside of New Salem then. And even at that, you stood seventh among 12 candidates. Yes, out of 300 votes cast in New Salem alone, you got 277. Now every soul in the county knows you. Abe, I've been talking uh, on the quiet among a lot of people around here, and we've got a kind of a proposition to put up to you. I'll let Bowling Green do it, since he speaks for everybody here. It's like this, Abe. A great many people have heard you debating and talking, and they like what you got to say. Now, we're a young country. We're growing. We got a big job to do, and we feel that you can help us do it. Now, Abe, when I say we, I mean that both parties are willing to put you on the ticket as the candidate for the legislature representing our county if you run. Well, what do you say, Abe? You can't lose with a proposition like that. I don't know what to say. I thank you, gentlemen. In some bright essence, could I lean and lull myself to immortality? How beautiful that is. A man could hardly go wrong with a poet like Keats. Oh, Anne, when you look at all those fine words and realize that Keats wrote them and died at 25, here I am, the same age, and what have I done? You're doing fine, Abe. Eh? Why, in the few years you've been here, you've changed. There's so much you could do if you tried. You mean run for the legislature? Well, I tried and I failed. 
Anyway, since then, my ideas about politics have changed. I used to think of it just as a job, like being postmaster. Now I don't know. Even if I won. It is a big job. It's too big, maybe. I don't think so. You'll try. I will, Ann. An honest man! I tell you, he has the true interests of this community at heart. Fellow citizens, I present to you our candidate for the state legislature, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, it's so warm in there. But it's a wonderful party, isn't it? And a, it's your party. Everybody's so happy you've won. And it's only the beginning. I know it is. Well, I couldn't have done it if so many of you hadn't believed in me. Oh, we believe in you. Everybody in New Salem believes in you. Everybody loves you. Everybody? Do you love me, Anne? I shall get a kink in my neck if I just look up to you all the time. Anne, I leave for the state capitol soon. The legislature sits for a few months and I'll be back. Can we be married then? We can be. No, oh, my dear, we're only going to have good luck. Very best luck in all the world. Oh, Anne. Shortly after Abe left for the state capitol, an accursed sickness struck the land. Malarial fever. In New Salem, too, it struck. The Johnson boy, old Mrs. Hawkins, and sickest of all, Ann Rutledge. Abe. Abe, my dear one. Everything I hoped you'd be. Without you, I'm nothing. I love you. I love you so much, I don't know what'll happen to me if I have to live without you. But that can't be. You're going to get well now. We'll be married the way we planned, and you'll come to the capital with me. There isn't anything. Wanting to talk to you, Abe. Anne said so many wonderful things. Did you know that met her? When I won the election, she said it was just the beginning. And that day she left me, she said I was everything she hoped I'd be. You are, Abe. That's why you mustn't continue to grieve so far. Sorrow's a decent, respectable thing, but you mustn't lose yourself in it. What am I to do? I'm no good without her. In a world of people, Abe, you don't live to yourself. You can't. You know, I was here the first day you arrived in New Salem, and I watched people as they've turned to you with respect and with faith. You have a wonderful way with people, Abe. They believe in you, and they'll follow you. You're a leader of men, and that's a gift too few have, one that's neither to be scorned nor wasted. You know what I'm talking about. I hear what you say. It's as though I can't think anymore. Very hard to understand. It isn't easy to understand the why of things, but somehow, somewhere behind all this, I think I can sense the mind of God. Yes, I think I sense that too. Thank you, Mentor. I know what I must do now. 